So today we have my friend Nigel's GoPod. So my friend uh, Nigel has kindly let me film his GoPod. Now this channel isn't really about caravans as such, uh, or GoPods. Uh, but eventually I like to do sort of a little man cave type thing in my van. So I thought, why not? We'll have a look at it. So I'm going to have a look around it. I've never done a, a review on a caravan before, so bear with me, I'm um, learning as I go along. So I hope you enjoy a little visit of this GoPod. Well, first of all, sorry for the light today. The weather's been very strange this week here in the UK, and um, a lot of things have come out very dark lots of photos and things i've taken so on the outside uh well, it's a bit tardis like um it looks tiny uh i mean i'm sort of getting on for six foot and um, even with the, the pop top open it's actually not too bad inside so you've got nice green decals on the outside just to explain a few things on the exterior uh, concerning Nigel's GoPod. Um, first of all, um, he's going to be getting his uh, windscreen on the front here sorted out because the seal is perished, so the window's okay, it's just that the seal's perished and he needs to go and get that uh, repaired. But uh, unfortunately, the company that does that sort of thing has a waiting list, so it's not going to be for straight away. And at the moment, he's working on sorting out the solar panel that goes on the top because when he bought it uh, you had the original flat thin solar panel on the roof and uh, one glued on top of it and uh, unfortunately when it comes to Nigel's garage uh, getting it in there was fun with a panel glued on the top so he's got his so it will be removable and he'll just use it when he's on site. Quite an impressive looking thing. I quite like it. I like the styling of it. I think it's uh, a really good thing, a good idea. And you can park it in a, an average garage. And um, when you're on site, you've got everything you need inside. So you've got a external hook up here, which uh, doesn't open. I don't want to try, I don't want to break it. So with that, I think we'll pop inside because it's getting a bit chilly out here. So we're just going to get in. There we go. Oh, I have to be careful because I'm quite tall. And I can actually stand up inside the pop top. And I've got my hat on. I can get in here perfectly fine. I mean, if I'm in here and I need to get into this fridge or do a bit of cooking, it is ideal. The only problem is, is that when, let me just step back a bit so you can see, if I go and sit down I have to be careful not to knock myself on this. But as you can see it's, it's deceptively spacious. I've actually been introduced to these, well via Nigel of course, but um, I've been watching a channel by Roz, I'll put the link in the um, description, where she goes on various adventures in her GoPod and it's well worth a look. So here I am sat in the lounge which converts into a bed. I'm not going to convert this into a bed. First of all, I'm not really sure how you do it. I think Nigel explained to me that you pull out some slats and what have you but anyway I think I'll leave it in the seating and but you can get a general idea of the size. I shall, I think I shall try and test it out if I can. It's not very easy with a camera, and I don't want to brain myself on that. I can brain myself on the thing up there as well. But, uh, yeah, there's lots of places where I can bang my head. Because um, I am vertically challenged, I'm quite tall. So, I'm going to arch onto here, and I shall lie back. So, I go a bit further back. <sighs> And for me, it might be a bit small because my feet hang off the end of the off the bench there. I think that you could get used to it actually once everything is is laid out and 
you know, you've got the actual bed set up, that I'd be worried about banging my head on this thing as I get up, which I haven't, so that's good. Your heating is sort of down here. Either side, you've got a vent. So I guess that if you've got the bed set up, I'm not sure how much heating you would actually feel. And you've got the controls there down below, which seem to be quite easy to use. I'll just get a different angle here on the heaters or the vents. So I'm guessing that with the bed set up, the heat will actually come out through the bottom of your bed. Well, I'm assuming that. Oh, there you go. It's bound my head already. So we've got the, the fridge just here, which is quite deep actually. That's quite, uh, you can get quite a lot in that. Enough for one person, or in my friend's case, one person and his dog. Then we've got the kitchen area. I'm a bit challenged with the camera at the minute, but uh, you've got a, a sink, a folding tap, and here you've got, uh, you lift this up and you've got your two burners underneath which uh, is very compact as well. So you've got all the displays for your battery, uh, your lights, your water. I guess that's the grey water, that one. You've got a USB outlet, USB, USB-C outlet, TV aerial. So all's good. Well, I guess in this day and age, you're going to be using the internet quite a bit to, to watch telly. And you've got your, your folding up table uh, with a thing underneath that... Uh, Hold it up, you can put your cutting board on there and you can do your stir fries and what have you. And there seems to be plenty of storage space as well. Uh, you press on this button here to open. There you've got space on there, you've got your microwave underneath the, the hob, so that's very convenient. At the bottom here, you've got a drawer, it's quite good isn't it? I guess you can put your knives and forks in there. Let's have a look in this one we've got here. And more storage saucepans and your, your gas bottle and then on the other side more storage there's so much storage in this thing and at the bottom you got your potty your portaloo so if you need to go for your business you've got somewhere to go so i'm going to attempt to set up the table one-handed let's see how we go We've got the, the top here, which is actually quite heavy, so I might not be able to do this one-handed. I shall set the table up. So as I said, I'm, I'm quite tall and got long legs, and this table is ideal because you can, you can swivel it about. I shall come a bit further out because I'm a bit too close to it. But you can swivel it about, which is good. It means you can get up out of the seat without crashing yourself on the table. But that's that's quite good it's quite practical sit there and have your breakfast looking out the window which we can't at the moment because obviously uh, it's covered over so i just crashed my head on this uh, thing up here i'm still not used to being in here but i think if i had one of these pods i'll get used to the bits where i can bang my head and my elbows and things uh, rather quickly uh, either that i'll have a painful time but uh, just uh, above my shoulder here, we've got a vent, and there's another one the other side over there. I don't know if you can see that. So Nigel is in the middle of sorting those out because they need to be um, sort of replaced. But I think he's going to, to blank either one or the other out, or probably both. Or you can have a vent that's, um, when you slide it across, it closes closes out the vents and so on because i think that it'll make the whole thing very drafty after a while and uh, you can always open open the window there in the kitchen to to ventilate if you need to and at the top there in the pop-up um you've got some gauze with a, a roll-up cover so you can air the place with that as well so having two big I'll just come back down here. Two big um, vents in the sides of the walls is probably not the best. 
So that's another thing he's working on, as well as the solar panel and the window. So all in all, I think it's it's rather good. So I'm just going to move this table to one side so I can get up without bashing myself. And I'll try not to bash myself up there when I get up. Probably wearing a cap's not a good idea because you've got this here and you, you're not really looking at things that you can bang yourself into. So there we go. And as you can see, I'm standing up straight and the little bobble on top of my baseball cap is touching the ceiling so if I can do that to illustrate that I think that's okay for me um, obviously if I take my hat off and I stand up straight the top of my head is still touching the ceiling but uh, I'm not going to be banging myself because obviously like everybody I'm slightly hunched over when I'm walking about and uh, if I'm just normal then see I can move my head and I've got plenty of room plenty of headroom so that is ideal so I'm going to take a wander outside because I forgot something I wanted to talk about uh, before I wrap up this video so we won't bang our head on the door getting out it's quite a jump down but uh, on this uh, particular go pod apparently it's called a power touch motor basically it's a motor that works on the on the wheels i'll show you in a minute uh, what it looks like to be able to move this is about remotely with remote control so that's quite useful if you don't have to break your back trying to move it onto a pitch so you have a bit of a closer look at the wheel i don't know if it's going to pick up very well you can see there's a metal cylinder here which when engaged onto the wheel um, there's one on each side so they work independently and using the, your remote control you can manoeuvre the uh, go pod wherever you want to uh, at a very slow pace thankfully but uh, it's a very useful thing to have because then you can effortlessly put yourself in place so I think we'll uh, wind things up there after having a quick look at the go pod I am by no means a vehicle reviewer, so excuse the little bits and pieces that are a bit disjointed. I'm just doing this, um, as we say in French, au pif, on the fly. Au pif meaning slang term for your nose, which means uh, you're doing it improvised and no planning whatsoever. Um, but it's very kind of Nigel to have let me have a look around his GoPod, because I've always been intrigued by them. And again, have a look at Roddy's channel, you'll see her using hers and going to various interesting places in Great Britain to go for her walks. So would I get one? Um, I would be, I don't know, I'd be tempted. I think what would put me off would be the sleeping arrangements because I am quite tall, I have back problems and perhaps I would get used to it. Um, but um, I wish I was a bit smaller and would be able to fit onto the bed without my feet hanging over the end but um, aside from that if it was one that was a bit longer then yes um, I would like the idea especially when uh, one day uh, I'll have more time with Madame MB and uh, you know being in France France is very camper van friendly uh, you have either well, camper van caravan friendly because that's not a camper van, it's a caravan. Um, there's lots of park-ups all over the place. Most of them usually secure. Lots of municipal campsites. Um, and, yeah, you could tour France and find somewhere relatively easily to spend the night. So that is very attractive. And one day, perhaps on the channel, we'll have something like that going. We'll have to see. I'm going to go and have a cup of tea or a coffee. Soon I'll be heading back to France and no doubt then you'll see this video. So take care of yourselves. See you in another video. Bye. So today we have my friend Nigel's GoPod and sometimes a dog barking in the background. Mm -hmm.